I'm Joe Exotic, king of tigers and defender of exotic animal zoos. This here is Cringer, my fearless friend. Fabulous secret powers were revealed to me that Dad smoked some really good meth and held off my mighty sword and said, By the power of Grayskull! I have the power! Cringer became the mighty Battle Cat. And I became Exotic Man, the most powerful redneck in the universe. Halloween's a couple days away. That means it's time for me to get my costume ready. This year, I decided to go with a mashup costume. I've made some pretty successful ones the last couple years, like Slave George Lucas with Emperor Mickey Mouse, Freddie Mercury Krueger, and my favorite, Judge Dangle. As you guessed by the intro, this year I'm mashing up everyone's favorite flamboyant meth head, Joe Exotic, with performance enhancer's number one spokesman and internet viral meme, He-Man. Buy those two, Freddy. They both own giant tigers, they both dress really fabulously, except for their hair, I mean, let's be honest. And most importantly, it gave me an excuse to make battle armor for my cat, which I'll be going over in a future video. In this video, I'll be going over how to work with EVA foam, how to adhere fabric to foam, and how to get realistic faux leather finishes. If you want to see how I made He-Man's power sword, I went over that in a previous video, and I included that link in the description below. All right. Without further ado, let's get started. To start, we're gonna make a duct tape pattern on my mannequin. First, I wrap the dummy in plastic wrap to make the tape easier to remove. Now, I can apply one fully covered layer of duct tape on top. Be sure to cover all your cracks. Next, I rough draft out the armor on half the dummy. Always be sure to mark your center line so you can make a symmetrical pattern. Maker's note, if you make a mistake with your Sharpie on the duct tape, a Clorox wipe will take it right away. Now we can cut this out and transfer it to some proper paper. The front, back, and belt patterns are symmetrical, so all I need to do is trace the duct tape, then mirror it over for the full pattern. To see the marks better, I go over them in Sharpie, and while I'm at it, I label the parts. I also add some indicator marks so I know what connects to what before I start cutting out the patterns. Now I'm ready to get some 8mm foam and transfer my patterns over. Then, cut them all out with my X-Acto. Then I break out the barge contact cement and apply it to the front straps and the center chest panel. Then five minutes later I adhere the straps to the panel. Now that we have the chest assembled this far, it's time to prep the fabric to wrap it. For that, I'm going to be using this blue cheetah print that I bought on Etsy. It was the most Joe Exotic looking fabric I can find. I trace out my chest armor on the back of the fabric. Then using a ruler and just eyeballing it, I trace an inch seam allowance around the edge. Then using a rotary cutter, but let's be honest, it's really a pizza cutter, I trim the outline. Last thing to cut here are the slits along the seam allowance to help the fabric form around the foam. Now it's time to shape the armor. I tape the front to the chest, then carefully heat form the straps around the body. To adhere the fabric, I'm going to be using Super 90. Like the contact cement, you'll need to spray both surfaces you're adhering. Wait a few minutes, then press together. To make it easier to adhere, I sprayed the center first, then I moved on to the straps.
Then onto the back panel. Now I spray the edges so I can completely wrap the fabric around the foam. After this, I'm going to glue some straps with buckles on the back to connect the back panel. When you cut nylon webbing, use a lighter to melt the ends and prevent unraveling. I'm just going to be hot gluing these on. Nothing special here. A great product to have on hand in your workspace to help cool things down are cans of dust off. When you hold the can upside down, it sprays out the Freon propellant, which is super, super cold, and it'll instantly cool anything. Hot foam, hot glue, Cassandra Peterson, I mean anything hot. Anyway, I'll be putting the buckled straps on the bottom of the back plate. This way, I can take it off easily by myself underhanded. To give this chest a little more dimension, I decided to make an additional center plate to layer on top last minute. I wanted this plate to have chamfered edges, so I used this foam angle cutter I got with my TNT cosplay foam. Just like before, I cut some fabric with some seam allowance and adhered the two together with Super 90. Then I used some contact cement to adhere it to the chest. With this checked off, I can start on his center symbol. I'm going to draft He-Man's Iron Cross insignia by hand. And for that, I'm going to need a compass. I start by drawing a small square. Then connect the corners to find my center. Once I have my center, I use that to mark it in the quarters, then mark a half inch from each corner. I adjust my compass so it can reach the center line in the half inch markings, then draw a curve on each corner until it makes a cross. Once that's cut out, I transfer it to some 10 millimeter foam. I'll be using this tiger print duvet cover to wrap the cross in. Once I trace the cross out on the other side, I cut it out with my X-Acto while I eyeball some seam allowance. And if you've been paying attention this far, you already guessed what I was going to do next. Another part off my checklist. Now for the ornamental buckles that go on his shoulders. For that, we're going to use 4mm foam. I cut out a 2.5 inch long strip from my roll, then break it down into 8 2 by 2.5 inch rectangles. So it looks fancy, I cut a tiny bit off all the corners, then score an inset line around the inside of each one. If I put my heat gun on low, I can open up that score I made so it looks more like a panel line. I do this to each of the buckles. Now, if I directly heat up the back, the foam will contract inward around the scored front, giving them a much more drastic domed shape. Before foam gets painted, you need to seal it. I prefer using Plasti Dip. I do a couple passes, then hit it with a hair dryer in between coats. Now we can paint. I'm all out of red, but this seems like a color Joe Exotic would wear, so it'll do. While I wait for those to dry, I'm going to hot glue on the insignia. Now that the paint's dry, I can put on all these buckles. I want to add some rivets to make this look more kinky, or um, I mean, more badass. A great aesthetic alternative are these push taps. Just make sure to glue them in tight. I'm using hot glue. And there we go, the chest is finished. Now that I have some armor that looks like it's from a not safe for work Cats musical Mad Max fanfic, we can move on to the belt. While you weren't looking, I heat formed the belt to shape. It looks pretty bland, just flat like this, so I'm gonna add some foam dowels around the edges. I cut a quarter of the dowel away, so I have a nice channel that'll sit on top of the belt. 
Huh, what do you know? Looks like Pac-Man. Anyway, with that quarter cut out, I heat form the edges to fit around the curve of the belt. Once that's shaped, I adhere it using contact cement. I'm going to add some shorties to extend the sides. Instead of filling in the gap between the dolls, I'm going to be lazy and cover it up with a heat form strip of 2mm foam. When forming foam around an edge like this, I like to press it in crevices with toothpicks before I hit it with a Freon blast. I make two of these and adhere them to the sides. Now that my belt has all its proper edges, I heat up the back of the center and form it around this styrofoam head. This will make it bubble out subtly and make it look less like I'm wearing a flat sheet of foam wrapped around my waist. The belt's going to have three large ornamental rivets. I want to give these more of a domed shape, and to do that we're going to cut some holes. Using some foam core and a circle scriber, I cut out some holes in the foam. I put the foam core on top of some 1-2-3 blocks, then take a square of 2mm foam and heat it up on top of the foam core. With a little pressure and persuasion with some cold Freon, we get a pretty nice domed shape. I make one large and two small buckles. Now, I'll take this foam half dowel extrusion and heat form them to size around each buckle. I adhere the edges of the rings together, then adhere them to each of the buckles before they're finally cut out. Now it's time to seal everything up with Plasti Dip. Before I paint the belt, I want to make some loincloth undies. I'll be using this pelt I got when I skinned Tony the Tiger. This was all just eyeballed, since it doesn't have to fit perfectly. I draft out an outline for the front of the loincloth, then cut out two identical parts. After I cut some slits around all the edges, I fold them over and use hot glue to keep them in place. Now I'll just connect these two together. And for that, I'll use contact cement. I'm going to switch gears to the gauntlet, and for that I'm going to be using TNT Cosplay's EVA 70 foam. This stuff is pretty dense for how thin it is, which makes it a perfect candidate to make fake leather. I'm going to eyeball mark using my arm how long I want the bracers to be. Then I cut out two identical sized squares. Also today while I'm doing voiceovers I have a cold so I sound like <laughs> So they fit my arms properly I cut out curves on the bottom and the top of the squares. Then I outline the ends of my bracer on more foam, so I can cut out strips to make it look like leather straps are wrapping around the top and bottom. Now let's make some holes. I have an arrangement of hole punches that work great on foam. I'm making these holes so I can lace up the braces with a thin string of leather. Now to heat form. Whenever I'm shaping any kind of gauntlet, I like to heat form it around a large cup. Ideally, the best type of cup you can use are those giant promotional cups, the ones you'd sometimes get at movie theaters to promote a movie. But we all know those are extinct now. Anyway, now that this is shaped, I heat form the straps to match the curve of the braces. Then, I adhere them using contact cement. While I still have the rollout, I'm going to use the 70 foam to make a scabbard for He-Man's power sword and a holster for a revolver, because come on, it's not Joe Exotic without a gun. To do this, I'll need my pre-made sword and a scrap of 70 foam. I heat up the foam until it's really malleable, then I wrap it around the sword. I go back and forth between heating it up and cooling it down. There, that's something usable. 
Now I'll cut the foam to a more appealing shape. And just like with the braces, make some holes. I'm also going to make some holes in the back of my armor so I can tie it in properly. The holster for my pistol is going to be pretty simple. I whip up a pattern to wrap around it, then transfer it to 70 foam. Now I'll just adhere it together with contact cement. Now I'll clean up the edges with my X-Acto, add a strip of foam to attach to the belt, and add some more holes so I can put some leather string on. All of our fantastic leather parts are made, now we can paint them. There's many different ways we can replicate the look of leather without just painting it brown. This is my preferred method. First, start with a light brown coat of paint. I painted the belt yellow first, but it doesn't make much of a difference, so just disregard that. You're going to want to let your part sit for a minute till it's about half dry, then grab a hold of some plastic wrap. Take your plastic wrap, crumple it up, and wrap it and dab it on the almost dried paint. Really press it down into the part. All the crumpled folds in the plastic wrap are going to replicate the random abrasions on real leather. Alternatively, especially for the first layer, you can ball it up and dab it all around. All these crinkles are going to bring out a texture-like quality to the paint. Next, you're going to want to do the exact same thing again, just with a darker brown. It helps if the top coat is a glossy finish. Okay, so now it kind of looks like leather, but can I make it look more realistic? Yes, you can. This wood stain and polyurethane seal is an excellent way to get the proper dark color and shimmer of leather. Once I hit it with a hair dryer for a couple minutes, that semi-gloss shine will turn to a nice satin finish. I repeated the same painting process for the braces and all the weapon holders. I ended up using what little of the spray stain I had left all on the belt. Luckily, I have a whole cabinet of normal wood stain laying around. I know I'm not wearing gloves and I should be, so just ignore that. The best way to apply the brush on wood stain your parts is just dab a cloth in it and then rub the cloth on your parts. Once you have adequate coverage, we break out some more balled up saran wrap and dab the f out of it. You can repeat this process in layers, but normally one's enough. I prefer this process over the spray stain technique, but they both have their ups and downs. The downside is normal brush on wood stain is going to have less of a shine on the EVA foam, but it'll still do its job. Last bit of painting to do is on the belt buckles. I'm painting them this metallic steel color. As soon as that paint dries, I mix a little bit of black acrylic with some rubbing alcohol and give it a black wash. Then use more crumpled plastic wrap to take it back a bit and give it a nice gritty look. Okay, I've waited a full day for the leather parts to dry and now we can adhere them to the rest of the costume. I cut more fur from the duvet cover and glued it to the ends of each of the bracers. Then, I took this roll of thin leather strip and laced it through the braces holes. Next, I'll apply contact cement to the back of the armor and my scabbard, then glue them together. Then, to make it look cool, I'll lace some more leather strip through the holes. Now to get the belt ready. I glue on some buckles with nylon straps to the back. Then, glue the corresponding connectors and waistband belt on the back of the back foam belt. Now I'm going to glue in my holster to the front foam belt using contact cement. To give it a little western touch, I'm running that leather strip through the holes of the holster. To make a thigh strap, I'm going to be using this genuine leather belt. I'm going to punch some holes in it so I can run my leather lace strip on my holster right through it. With all that said and done, the only thing left to do on the belt is glue the loincloth on. Alright, final stretch. I got these boots at a thrift shop and I'm going to make them a bit more fancy. Using almost all of what's left on the duvet cover fur, I glue fur on the top of the boots. To top it off, I have these leather buckle straps and I'm going to glue them around the boots ankles.
And there we go, Joe Exotic, master of the universe. my projects was pretty fun to build. This was particularly easy to pattern from scratch and tweak. A great introduction to foam project if I can ever recommend one. And of course it's ridiculous, which is just how I like it. Most of all, this was a perfect excuse to make some battle cat armor for our cat Banshee, which I'll be showing you how to do in a quick video next month. I really hope there's a season 2 of Tiger King coming out, because I have a perfect idea for another Joe Exotic costume. If you want to see more videos like this, I'm going to be a stereotypical YouTuber and ask you to hit that like and subscribe button. And if you want to see more current work, check out my portfolio on Instagram, at FreddyProps. See you next time. Can, can you tell I'm flexing? No, you look like you're rowing. <laughs> no, but like, I'm trying to look muscular. Is it showing a difference or should it? Yeah, in this arm I can see it. Okay. My, what about my abs? <laughs> what, wait. Um, we can always airbrush them on. But, you know, I thought about that. Do you know how to do that? <laughs> Just contour? Yeah. <laughs> how, how long will that take? I don't know. Like 15 minutes. Oh, that's too much. How about now? Better. I guess I can see the line. But, yeah, I always take some Oh my gosh, it's seriously, I was recording.